Yeah, thanks a lot uh, for that, Anuj. Uh, well, let's move on then. We have a couple of earnings as well that came on Friday. And Hindalco's quarter two earnings, well, it came a little bit weak, but it was better than what the sheet was fearing. The copper EBITDA, well, that came as a pleasant surprise. Mr. Satish Pai, the managing director at Hindalco, joins us now. Well, morning, Mr. Pai. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, let's start off with Novelis first up. That's the largest uh, EBITDA driver, right? You have guided for some softness in the EBITDA per ton. So should we be working with a number of, say, $420, $440 per ton for the second half of this fiscal? And more importantly, are we expecting a bounce back to normal levels post that? Uh, Novelis, by the way, had a very uh, decent Q2 with $506 million EBITDA. And they have said that, you know, they could be facing headwinds of about $75 to $125 a ton in Q3 and Q4. Now, these headwinds are coming from inflationary costs. It's coming from the fact that LME and premiums are down, which is dragging their scrap benefit down. And it's coming from the fact that there are, you know, energy uncertainties in Europe in particular. So it would be fair to say that probably Q3 and Q4 will help us shed some of these negative uh, headwinds that we are seeing. And we still remain committed to our $525 per ton guidance that we get. So we think that many of these are sort of uh, macroeconomic headwinds that everybody's facing and should get uh, hopefully resolved over the coming few quarters. That's our expectation. Uh, Mr. Pai, is there a risk to novellus volumes? Could we uh, perhaps uh, see a degrowth even, uh, your sense? So historically, 60% of our volumes are in the beverage can. And if you actually remember, even during the peak COVID times, what happens is that people consume more beverage cans at home. So this is fairly recession-proof. So on the can side, you know, you may not have big growth, but we are not going to see a degrowth. Uh, I think the question is more interesting in auto because uh, the chip shortage issue has gone away, but the backlog in auto is quite uh, heavy. So we are not seeing any demand drop, at least in Q3 and Q4. Now, if the whole recession continues, will auto start to slow down in next year? It's a possibility. On the aerospace side, we are seeing no slowdowns because the uh, air travel is back in a big way. Building and construction, I think you will see some slowdown with the high interest rates. We have not seen it yet because of high backlog, but possibility is there that next year we will see some slowdown in deals. So it's a sector by sector sort of outlook, but the large sectors like beverage can for us are fairly resilient proof, recession proof, sorry. Okay, so what kind of cost relief on aluminum can we work with in uh, the second half of FY23? What would the impact be on the business? Single biggest thing that has impacted our cost of production is the availability and price of coal. So I think that, you know, we have started to see post-monsoons, uh, the coal availability and the pricing situation starting to ease. And we are cautiously saying that 2 to 5% uh, reduction in cost of production will be seen in Q3. I don't want to give a guidance for Q4 yet because we need to see how the coal situation in India improves. I mean, it has been fairly unprecedented that we have gone through such a high tightness on the availability of coal with such high pricing. In the last few years, this is the first time we have seen. Well, Mr. Pai, going by what you're saying, clearly the tightness, the pricing as well has been a problem on the coal side. So give us a breakup of your coal sourcing mix. As of now, what is it? So in quarter two, roughly 50% came from linkage and 30% came from e-auctions. And the remaining 20 was our own mines, imports, buying from private parties. Uh, in Q3, this mix is not going to change much because uh, the linkage, even though the realization percentage goes up, one of our linkage has uh, lapsed. So we'll have to buy more coal on the auction. So we are. this mix will remain the same in Q3. Hopefully in Q4, the linkage percentage will go up to 60, 65%. Uh, Mr. Pai, copper EBITDA has been stable for the last many quarters. Should we work with a quarterly run rate of 500 crores? Yeah, I think that, you know, we have just given uh, on the analyst call, we have said that, you know, we, we are confident it will stay between 450 and 500. Okay, between 450 and 500. What about the debt 
there has been no reduction in uh, quarter two. So I'm asking you, any plans to reduce debt for the rest of the year? I think if you saw our debt, it has dramatically come down in the first half of this year because we repaid in India 6,000 crores of debentures plus 2,500 crores of Utkal. Uh, Utkal Alumina Limited is now completely debt-free. So if you look at the net debt to EBITDA in India, it's 0.47. So the Indian operations has delevered in a very big way. Novellus is still uh, at the same level of debt because it's largely bonds, but those bonds were refinanced when the coupon rates were very low. So I think overall, if you look at the finance costs of Novellus and Hindalco, we are in a very strong position going into an environment where interest rates are going up. All right, Mr. Piper, break it up for us. Uh, the consolidated net debt number split it between basically the standalone business and the Novellus business as well. Consolidated net debt in India now is 4,800 crores and is about 37,000 crores in Novellus. It will stay at this level for the second half of this year because all the repayments that we promised to do, we have completed in India. In India, the net debt is only 4,800 crores now. Mr. Pai, any movement on the Hindustan copper divestment? No, we just are still waiting and watching. Okay, all right. Thanks so much.